Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Philips PM2423 digital multimeter. I think this is from the start of the 70s or mid 60s or something like that. It is rather old. And look at that. I think we got some Nixie tubes in there. And that is exactly why I bought it. And this is another little flea market score. I really hope it works. It is a little crusty when I try and push the switches. Ooh, is this? See? Ha uh ha. -huh. So there's a little bit of that. But it can do volt, DC volts, AC volts, mega ohm, kilo ohm, or ohms. And then it says max 200. And then there's a range hold. Range. Oh, so that means it's probably for the voltages, maybe. I don't know exactly what is going to go, what's going to happen here. So we've got, okay, a little bit of limitation is here. AC volts only 350, DC volts 1000. And there's a nice handle, goes clickety clickety, okay. 220 only. And there's an external something hold. Yeah. I really want to inspect this before I just uh, plug it in. So let's see how how can we open this? What is the trick? Yeah, that will be the trick, right? Some screws here, so that's what I'm gonna try. Let's try that. I think it is a little bit funny to show this. Sometimes <laughs> I attack the wrong screws first. So the screws here for for the little feet and they're different see flat and that one and then this is where you go in remove these and then ha ha i really think i need to go and clean this a little bit with compressed air and a soft paint brush because you can hardly read what is written here on the circuit board but it's definitely uh, really, really old. We got some uh, read relays for different ranges. And uh, there's a shield box here with some components. And if I look real careful in here, I also see some more relays. Yeah, we're going to open all these as well. And down here, Look at all the dust and good old stuff. Yeah, so a lot of cleaning. But I also see uh, some nasty corrosion, especially down here to the left tube. And we've got another little neon bulb for a little one. And then some more neon bulbs in here for the different ranges or some indications and some very special transistors. And then, oh yeah, a little power supply, a little power supply regulator. So after a little bit of clean up, I feel I want to just try and power it up and see what happens. So it's not using any kind of power before I push the power switch. So that is so far pretty good. It's using 11.9 watts. And I think it is in some sort of auto, auto fantastic range. So let's just uh, see what happens here. That will be, oh, that was nice. 12. 
I will try and crank it down to about 12 volts. Oh, still a little bit too much. I think I have 12.3 zeros as input right now. <laughs> it, it reads 12.00 on that meter. How nice is that? And there's a little positive here. So it's. I bet it is going the other way. Didn't you just like the way that it counts up? And then it goes, okay, zero, it goes to zero real fast, but then it goes. So there's some sort of a, I can hear some clickety clickety. Oh, I love it so much already. And it really works. Of course, I need to clean it really, really nice. And I mean, I need to poke it completely to pieces and, uh, get in here and clean it up. There's not so much light in there because it's completely dirty. I think it's gonna look nice and shiny when I am done. So let's let's try and uh, take it to pieces and try and clean it up a little bit. This is the top board after a little bit of uh, cleaning and a little bit of zooming in. So all those transistor amplifiers and all the relays and look at the little Teflon isolation and all that kind of stuff. This is of course done. Um, so the high impedance, high voltage modes and all the high voltage dividers and all that is working as accurate as possible without any leakage. And uh, the read relays, they of course handle different voltage ranges and we got some trimmers here and they are most likely in series with the different voltage range components uh, I'm very sure this is the AC amplifiers and the AC to DC converting we also got a little bit of uh, trimmers and see the variable capacitors here over some other resistors that's definitely to handle frequency range and again we got some read relays and all that kind of stuff see this resistor with two two picofarad capacitors in series across that resistor to speed it up a little bit over voltage input protection and all that kind of stuff really really beautiful design and what you also need to notice is that we have this idea this is a Philips but it is of course a rebranded they just bought everything from Japan Tokyo in 1971 and put a little Philips sticker on the front here on the back side we can really see all the different little Teflon Isolation things. They also added a some spray varnish as you can see here. I'm quite um, impressed for 1971. So that was the top board. The bottom board is <laughs> the power supply. And this is a very Japanese kind of style where they use these black and dark green diodes. See, they point in, in or out, out for all the different voltages instead of using bridges. We've got some capacitors here for the different voltages and some transistors and voltage regulators they have made for that. It is using 5 volt of plus 15, negative 15 and plus 220 volts as written right there. This is of course for the Nixie tubes. The three Nixie tubes are right here. And there's a really funny thing. Look at the right one. It is really, really dark and kind of worn down. But why only that one? See, no soldering was done here. So I don't understand exactly why it happened to only the right one. We can read here on the back 
the type number B5750. Maybe I can find a new one and uh, plug in there. It's a little bit tough to do the soldering and get the angles right and all that kind of stuff, but it could be, it can, it can be done, definitely. So and here we see the 74141s, a classic uh, BCD2 um, Nixie driver, three of these, so this is direct driven. And then we got some Toshiba parts. I think those are latches to isolate the uh, four bits coming here from the left. So that will be some counters. And then you count up and compare, and then you latch the read out. And what I think they have done is uh, using all those different parts and all the parts here, I think they have created a dual slope AD converter using this capacitor right there as the charge timing capacitor. So you charge this up and down and uh, count the time and uh, depending on how many volts you put into the AD converter, or <laughs> that capacitor and some switches, this is uh, the number you count to. And this thing can count to 1999 in each of the ranges and then it auto ranges using the relays and all that kind of stuff. It is, uh, yeah, quite impressive uh, design to be honest. They made their own little mains filter using this inductor here. And this goes to the transformer. I don't know if we can see, yes we can. We can see the capacitors down there. Capacitors and the inductor creates a low pass filter for the transformer. So no nasty high voltage from mains can go in and disturb this unit. And again, the circuit board definitely made manually. This is definitely before um, CAT. See? So tape and transparent film, and then moving and moving the tape until you have your layout. Oh boy, that was uh, the good old times of uh, funny shaped tracks. And I think this uh, board, yes, as you can see here, it uses a real um, through via technology as they didn't put in solder in all of the VS. See the wires for the terminals they are really nicely extra isolated like that. This is probably done by somebody else later. Here we got the type number. Okay, so there's a, a, an extra number to the type number. Dash 01. We got uh, the Probably the serial number right here, 0142. It's 11 watts, and that is very close to what I also measured. Yeah, I think I will clean the switches a little bit. They go a little bit uh, tight and tough. Yeah, but I think this is uh, more or less all I wanted to show you. I didn't want to go super duper deep into all the details here. I just wanted to show how this one was done and uh, I hope to see you soon again. Bye bye.